Good morning, everybody. Welcome, and thank you guys very much for being here today. Hope everybody is doing well. We are going to do some fishing for a bit. Parkow, good evening to you. Welcome to the stream. Yep. Yeah, we are back inside today. I'm, I'm giving it another chance, and I'm, I'm trying to approach it with a little bit of a different mindset than the last time that I was playing. So we'll see how it goes. Radon, good morning to you. Is it morning in the States? Yes, it's 9.30 a.m. for me right now. And I'm over on the East Coast. As you get towards the West Coast, it gets earlier and earlier in the morning.
you, you guys saw that cat fly across the sky, right? I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, but I don't think I'm quite hallucinating yet. But there was a hunter's pet, and it flew right over the river. Very disconcerting. You don't like to see that kind of behavior in a cat. Snicklefritz, good morning, buddy. Welcome to the stream. Alright, well, that's probably good for now. Whenever we can, we will cook these. Next time we are at a fire. For now, let's head across the river. And let's visit Sven and Lars. And we're going to do a little bit of stuff in Duskwood. Mainly going to be doing the green stuff. Um, if we can get back to Darkshore, that would be good. 
Uh, let me check and see if we actually have anything substantial to do back in Darkshore before we make that plan. Uh, power's below. Sleeper has awakened. We've got a bunch of beach sea turtles. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know if we really need to go back there or not. We might not need to. We have wetland stuff to do that's low level. Including the Elgaz Gauntlet. So maybe we really don't need to go to, to Darkshore. Maybe we can just kind of scratch that off the list for now. The questing should be easier now. Yeah, that's what I, w I was thinking. I was thinking that, you know, with most people probably having already leveled up a couple of characters, you need something? Getting quest objectives should be a little bit easier. Safe travels. And uh, yeah, we we basically we did all dungeons essentially on the Paladin. And I don't want to do the same thing. I don't want to do that again. It was an interesting experience. But I do feel like I probably got a little bit burned out. I got, I got burned out, like, retroactively. Like, while I was doing it, I wasn't burned out. But then, like, afterwards, I feel like there was probably some burnout. Let's see if I can remember how to push my buttons. So, a couple of things that we have that are a little bit different. Instead of using Void Plague, I'm using Twisted Faith. So, Mind Flay and Mind Blast deal 50% increased damage to targets afflicted with power, uh, Shadow Word Pain. So, that's a little bit different. One less button to push, basically. We still got the Homunculi. And I'm still using Penance. I did get into the Shadow Tree, though, and we learned Mind Flay. That's going to be a channel that causes damage, and it's going to slow movement speed. So, we'll see how that goes. And then we still have Wand Specialization. I feel like I still want this. Uh, if I didn't have that, I would probably go into Improved Mind Blast. That's where we'll be going next. Elgin, good morning to you. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for being here. Hey there. See you later.
What can I do for you? Be careful. You think dwarf female is the least played? Um, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't have any idea about those statistics. <laughs> the ponytails make the race. Someone told me that they weren't ponytails. That they are, uh, it's a double, it's a double braid. <laughs> Apparently a ponytail is something quite different. As someone who is follically challenged, like, I have no idea about hair. Because I don't really have any hair on my head, so. But I've, I've been told that they're not ponytails. But yes. The best thing about them is, uh, let's see, is that they can do this. <laughs> and I think this is uh, absolutely amazing. Definitely the coolest animation in Classic. They just go wild. It's pretty great. that happens in retail too yeah I, mean, I guess it would why would they change it you know the first time I noticed it was on the hunter in hardcore when we would have to revive our pet that would happen and then somebody told me that on the priest it happened whenever you cast a heal so the choice was pretty obvious at that point all right I don't really think I want to grab everything because I, I mainly want to try to be doing green quests. I have a lot of green quests in various places. Uh, the Dark Shore stuff I'm going to untrack for now. I'm not, I don't think we're going to go back to Dark Shore. Red Ridge. I feel like I've done most of the, the green stuff in Red Ridge. No, I haven't. Well, we, we haven't done a lot. But nothing's green though. It's a lot of yellow stuff. Okay, so we're good there. I am gonna set the hearthstone here. You need something? Go with honor, friend. Greetings. Go with honor, friend. For the alliance. Light bless you. So I guess we want to work on the dusky crab cakes and the eight-legged menace. Is there anything else that I want to pair up with that? Probably the Hermit. We can probably grab the quest to go talk to the Hermit. Worgen in the Woods we can skip for now. Totem of Infliction I don't think we need right now. Need help? Farewell. And we'll grab the first Night what Watch I quest, but I, I don't think we're going to even... One. Well, we could do it. But let, let's do the green stuff first, and then maybe we'll head to the wetlands. We have a bunch of green stuff we can work on there as well. So we'll just head to the north and we'll work our way down along the coast. my favorite classic NPC? I've never been asked that question. I don't think I have a favorite NPC. I've never thought about it. 
That is something that in 20 years I, I've never thought about what my favorite NPC is. I'm not sure that I have one. Zenkai, good morning to you. Welcome, buddy. Now the problem is, like, Mind Flay, Mind Flay is, it can slow them down, okay? That's great. Um, but I need to open up with Shadow Word Pain, because I'm using Twisted Faith. And that makes Mind Flay and Mind Blast deal additional damage when I have Shadow Word Pain up. As soon as I hit Shadow Word Pain, they run for me. Um, maybe, I just need to be at max range, maybe. Do I get any talents to, like, extend my range? Doesn't... Oh yeah, Shadow Reach. Am I gonna get into Shadow Reach? Yeah, we, we can get here eventually. That, that would be really good. That's more time to use Mind Flay. Kind of keep them at a distance. That being said, I could just pop my bubble. And it doesn't really matter if they're at range or not. It's going to take me a minute to get back into the flow of the class. Haven't touched it for a long time. Well, last time we touched it, we were trying to heal some dungeons. We will not be doing that anytime soon. I don't really plan to do any dungeons until we can do... Scarlet Monastery Library. I think library, there's there's obviously nothing in stockades that we need gear-wise. Library is going to be the first place that has any cloth gear that we can actually use. And like the other Scarlet Dungeons, they don't really have a lot. I don't think there's a lot of caster gear in Armory. And there's, well, there's some in Cathedral. So the, there's a helmet and a neck piece in Cathedral. But Armory, I, I don't think there's really anything. Let's do that. Let's put up a bubble. Oh, there we go. I'm really not sure if using Twisted Faith is really worth it. Like, part of me just wants to use Void Plague, and then we don't have to worry about Mind Flay... ...as much. I, I really can't tell if this way of doing things is really beneficial, just because we, we can't get the slow in on Mind Flay, really. Mind Flay's range is only 20 yards, ooh. Well, that's part of the problem. 20 yard range is not good. Also, like, within a full cast, even with the buff we're getting from the rune, we're still not doing a lot of damage with it. So I wonder if it's probably just better to not use it. 
let's try to go back to using Void Plague. And then we can, we can do this. Yeah, I feel like that might just be better still. Maybe on like a boss or something where we weren't worried about getting hit. Then it would be good to do it the other way, but yeah. This way we just get two dots up. We don't have to worry about trying to get the slow off. And then we can use our wand. Is WoW worth playing in 2024? I mean, that's like a personal thing. I don't know if it's worth it to you. If you like MMORPGs, then yeah. Absolutely. It's it's one of the few MMOs, in my opinion, that are worth playing. Not that there are many MMOs. <laughs> there's there's only a handful that are any good. Uh, but yeah, it depends on what kind of games you like. It's such like a broad question when people ask that. Like, I just don't know what to say. Is it worth playing? Like, I don't know. Totally depends upon you. For me, it's worth playing. Yeah, sorry. I, w I wish I had like a a better and more like wordy answer, but it's really hard for me just to like make quantifications for the game. If you like MMOs, yes. If you don't like MMOs, then I would avoid it. And then there's that issue where, where, like, these days, when someone says World of Warcraft, well, I mean, there are, like, six different versions of the game right now. So then you have to th talk about all the different versions. You have Retail, you have Season of Discovery, you have Classic Era, you have Wrath of the Lich King, you have Hardcore. You have so many different, like, flavors of WoW that, like, when you start to talk about whether or not it's worth it to individual people, like, you have to take into account all the different ways you can play the game, and it just gets really messy to talk about in, in like, general terms. I play all versions of the game, so to me it's all worth it. I'm a skinner on this character. I can skin things. Uh, at level 26, I have to make sure that I go back to town and train the next rank. I'm pretty sure we can't do that until level 26. What would I recommend for someone coming back to the game after 10 years? It's a tough one. Try, you're, you know, you're gonna you're gonna pay your sub, and with your sub, you get access to Season of Discovery. You get access to Wrath of the Lich King. You'll get access to some version of Retail, depending on like what expansion you own. You can try try all of them and decide for yourself. Everybody's different, and everybody likes different versions of the game for different reasons. So, you know, with your sub, you get access to, like, a lot of different versions. I would say, like, give, a give each version a little bit of time, and then you can kind of come to that decision on your own. Yeah. 
Yeah, but there's one end game, right? No. No, there's not there's not one end game. Um there's different versions of the game. So there's Season of Discovery, that has its own end game. There's Classic Era, 1 to 60, that has its own end game. There's Wrath of the Lich King, that has its own end game. There's World of Warcraft Retail, right now that's Dragonflight, it has its own end game. There are different versions of the game, each provide each on a different type of server, each providing a different leveling experience and having a different end game. Y you're gonna have to do a little bit of research. <laughs> It's there's a lot of different ways to play WoW now. They are all like individual ways to play that do not connect. Um, you're never gonna be like playing Season of Discovery one day and then all of a sudden be in Dragonflight. Like so, do a little bit of reading. WoWhead has some pretty good guides to like kind of explain things in overview because yeah, it can be complicated if you're coming back to the game after ten years or whatever amount of time, and you haven't played Classic at all, and you've been out of touch with retail, it's it's confusing. Lots of different server types, lots of different ways to play. Three different game clients, like there's the Classic Era client, the Wrath of the Lich King client, and the Retail client. Within the Classic Era client, there's three different types of servers, Season of Discovery, Classic Era, and Hardcore. So no, and they're not connected in any way. Sometimes I wonder how many people bounce off of WoW entirely right now just because of how how difficult it is to understand all the different ways to play it. Like I wonder how many people get into the game, they look at all the options they have in Battle.net and in the server list and they're just like, what? And then they give up. We don't really know what they're going to do with Wrath Realms yet. We're assuming they're all going to roll over to Cataclysm. But we don't know that for sure. When Burning Crusade became became Wrath, like, they didn't leave any Burning Crusade Realms open. You had to pick between Classic Era and Wrath, so we're assuming they're going to do the same thing. But they haven't come out and said. Uh, the reason I think they're going to roll everything into Cataclysm is like I, I can't imagine them having more versions of the game for people to consider. I, I can't imagine them leaving Wrath open. Because then, you, then you're going to have Classic Era, you're going to have Hardcore, you're going to have the Season of Discovery, you're going to have Cataclysm, you're going to have Wrath of the Lich King. It, it's it's going to split the player base way too much. And it was probably why they didn't leave any Burning Crusade realms open when we moved into the Wrath era, is that there's only so much you really want to split the player base. It's nice to have choices, but there is such a thing as too much choice. And we may be at like the rickety edge of having too many ways to play the game. So yeah, I, I foresee all Wrath Realms moving into Cataclysm era. Cataclysm was a good expansion when it first came out. Are people going to enjoy it the second time around? I don't know. But there's a lot of people who will be enjoying Cata for the first time. And I think for those people, it's going to be pretty cool.
I feel like regardless of spec, Penance is the most powerful spell in the Priest Arsenal. It's so strong compared to like, anything else that we can do. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so we got all the wolf links we need. We got all of the spider parts we need. We need pygmy spiders, but there aren't that many over here. A lot of the pygmies are over this way. So let's keep heading to the west. We'll stop by and visit Amber Crombie, and we'll finish the spider quest. day to you. Have a good one. How are you? See you around. Somebody is not looting their corpses? Shame on them. Just money laying on the ground. Thank you. 
right, level 26. Um, we can go into improved mind blast, but right now I'm not doing a lot of mind blasting. That's the only problem with that. We could increase the duration of Shadow Word Pain, but I don't really think the duration is running out by the time the enemy dies. Yeah, 18 seconds. Things are usually dead within 18 seconds. Reducing the cooldown on Psychic Scream could be okay. Oh man, yeah, I guess we go into Improved Mind Blast. It's gonna reduce the cooldown. And yeah, we're not really using the cooldown though. Um, I don't know. That's a tough one. I don't really need a chance to stun the target. So I, I guess I go here and maybe that is valuable later on. This guy's evade bug, let's we'll let him reset.
Uh, that seems bad. I'm kind of happy that guy is distracted, killing that other player. And maybe we will get away. That was my wake-up call that we are, in fact, on a PvP server. And I could be PvP'd at any moment. stitches just messing up everything for us we have a quest to turn in here buddy maybe stitches will die and the quest giver will still be alive I don't know if I can do a lot here but I can try I I'm hitting for small amounts Okay, that's great, that's great. Do we still have a quest giver alive or are they dead? Yes, perfect. Need help? Be careful. Yep, this is Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf, where my long lost guild is. Stan, good morning to you. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. So we need Stormwind Seasoning, and that's fine. We're going to go to Stormwind anyway. We hit level 26, so I can train the next rank of Skinning. Might be able to train the next rank of Tailoring also. And of course we can train level 26 abilities. Honor, friend, for the alliance. Go with honor, friend. And while I'm thinking about professions, let's go ahead and cook up the fish that we fished earlier. Get that done. Monica, good morning, good afternoon to you. Welcome to the stream.
light be with you. Careful. I should probably just sell these crates. It's not going to be worth anything for me to turn them in. Even if I can fill them, they're going to be low level and they're not going to be they're not going to be worth anything. So I'm just going to vendor them. Light bless you. Light be with you. Safe travels. Be careful. Go with honor, friend. Light bless you. Careful. King's honor, friend. I'm going to buy a bunch of the seasoning because I'm pretty sure we'll have a recipe and I can use it to level up my cooking. So we only need one. 
I'm gonna buy like 40 of them. Just so I have them. They're relatively cheap, so. Farewell. All right, next we'll go train our skills and then we'll stop by the tailor. to you desperate prayer rank three uh okay cool flash heal two renew four and shadow word pain rank four safe travels let's get some of that out to the bar Uh, the expert trainer is around the corner, I think. This would probably be better for us. The chest we have on has no intellect. Um, we have... I, pro I probably vendored the spider silk. I bet we had some spider silk. I bet we did. We have everything else. I could maybe... Grab some spider silk. Need help? Oh, look at that. We got. I sold one of them, so we got one of them back. I only need to buy one, which I'm hoping that we can afford.
Um, what did I do wrong? Let's try this. Oh, there's a, it's spider's silk, not spider silk. Uh, I don't really want two of them. Here we go. We'll buy one of them. Let's also check the price of medium leather. It's not really selling for anything. We might be better off just vendoring it. And there we go. It's pretty cool looking. Alright, so now we have to go back to Jitters. The fastest way to do that is going to be to fly to Sentinel Hill. And then make the run from Sentinel Hill. And then if it's convenient, we can hearth back to Darkshire if, if we can. And I am going to bio really quick while we're in well flight. Met. It's not going to be a long flight. I'll be right back. For the Alliance.
What can I do for you? Have a good one. See you around. Okay, so we could go after the spiders, but that quest is level 25. We could go for Mary's hair, that's level 24, level 24 here. Everything we have here now is yellow. If I look at the wetlands, we have some stuff that is going to be green. So I, I think our next stop is actually going to be going to the wetlands. That seems to be what we should do. Let's turn this one in. Light be with you. Light bless you. Roger, did I change my mind about returning to Saad? Yeah, I change my mind all the time. I'm like ADD, bipolar, like, I change my mind all the time. I, I, I think about things a lot, so like, by way of thinking about things and thinking about like my motivations for stuff, I often come to like different conclusions. And one of the conclusions I came to yesterday was that I would try to play Saad, but I would do it a little bit differently than I was doing it before. So yeah. Yeah, stick around. I'll change my mind a dozen more times. But no, what I decided that is that I, I wanted to try to come back and actually quest. And just have the relaxing journey that I'm used to having. Which is not what we were doing when the phase opened. When the phase opened, we were dungeon grinding and we were trying to get the max level, level 40. As quickly as possible. And after doing that once on the Paladin... I don't think it was, I don't think that dungeon grind was ever going to be well, enjoyable thanks. to me again. But yeah, I, I did need a cooldown because I kind of burned myself out a little bit. But yeah, the problem with having a lot of time on your hands is that you think about stuff too much. And when you do that, you change your mind often. Uh, let's go to, let's go to Lak Mudan. That way we can run up and we can do the Dun Elgaz gauntlet quest. Yeah, I'm trying to take this one back to basics and just like whatever I do in the season, I, I probably just want to be able to quest. Like we couldn't, we couldn't really quest effectively when the phase launched because it was so crowded and, and mobs were coming at a premium. It was hard to get tags on stuff. Uh, I don't know what, I don't know what Stranglethorn is going to be like this time around, but yeah. On the Paladin, all we did basically was do dungeons. We we started with stockades, we went from stockades right into Scarlet Monastery, and we grounded up all the way. And that was okay to do at that one time, but I don't think that was ever going to be okay to, for me to do that again. Not not soon, you know. Even if that is the best way to get XP, I did kind of burn myself out. I have to remember to re-engrave my chess piece. And I think where I'm at with retail, like with retail, I'm either gonna my, my paladin or my mage. One of those characters I'm gonna take into War Within. So the the mage is maxed out already at 70, and the pally, I'm gonna continue the series with the pally, so the pally will level up in the recorded series. One of those two characters, it, probably both of them eventually, but I'm not really digging the Demon Hunter. I, besides the Paladin, I have found that in retail, melee classes are kind of boring for me. The Rogue was boring, uh, the Demon Hunter feels boring, which is funny, the Demon Hunter has so much movement, you're like, how could it be boring? It just feels boring to me. I really liked the Mage, how we were like reacting to procs, and all of our spells seemed really impactful. We just seem powerful, and on the Demon Hunter we seem speedy, but I'm not really feeling like, I'm not really vibing with the class. So yeah, I, I think with retail I'm in a good spot right now, I got the mage, and I'm gonna have the paladin. And eventually we'll gear one of them up a little bit, once I get the paladin capped. And then one of those characters will go into War Within, so I think I'm good there for now.
Yeah, the Demon Hunter just wasn't feeling fun. I, I also, like, more importantly, like, I don't feel, like, a sense of rhythm. Like, with the Frost Mage, I felt like a good rhythm. Procs were going up, like, react to the procs. It was, it was a fun time. With the Paladin, there is a sense of rhythm to the abilities and a, a sense of rhythm to the cooldowns. On the Demon Hunter... It was a bunch of tiny little cooldowns, like a 30 second cooldown, a minute cooldown, 30 second cooldown. And it just like, I don't, I don't know. That's not, that's not really fun. It wasn't fun. It felt like it should have been fun because it was like fast and action packed, but it, it didn't have that effect on me. It had the effect of kind of boring the crap out of me. And I think I feel the same way about the Monk. I think like any of the newer, after the Death Knight, any of the newer classes that they made after Death Knight, they don't feel like WoW classes to me. They don't, they don't feel like, they don't have the progression and they don't have the feel of like other WoW classes. Anything after Death Knight. And I, I feel like between between my shaman, my warlock, my mage, and the paladin, like that's going to be a good selection of classes to take into war within. I don't really think I need anything more than that. I know I found the destruction warlock a lot of fun. Uh, Demonology was fun when I tried that as well. Frost mage was a lot of fun. Protection pally's fun. Like I think I have enough like really good options to choose from enhancement shaman i always have a i always have a blast playing the enhancement shaman just reacting to all the procs that go off is, is fun for me same reason why i kind of like the frost mage so i feel like i'm pretty squared away Oh, I'm sure it's obvious, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's obvious when I'm having a good time and when I'm not having a good time. Yesterday, playing the Demon Hunter, I just felt, I felt incredibly bored. And I was trying to give it time to breathe a little bit, but... It really wasn't doing anything for me. Alright, we are going to run north, we're going to grab the turn in here, and then we'll do the Elgaz Gauntlet. We'll head into the wetlands. Justin, good morning to you. Welcome to the stream. My thoughts on Winter Spring? I haven't been in Winter Spring in a long time. I like it. It's one of the few, like, wintry zones in the game. But I haven't spent a lot of time there. It's in that, like, far off, like, almost endgame level bracket between, like, level 50 and level 60. So, you know, those are the zones that, like, with playing so much hardcore recently, and then now with Season of Discovery, 
It's been a long time since I've been in those zones. Looking forward to it, though. Well met! Dig your feet on the ground! Weston, good afternoon, good morning, welcome. How's my Sunday so far? It's been, uh, it's been good. I, uh, I had a lot of trouble sleeping last night. I got up super early because I just, I couldn't sleep. Just like, I, I feel like I woke up like every single hour. I woke up from like 11 o'clock at night until like 6 o'clock in the morning. I woke up every hour. Finally, I decided to get out of bed. Staying in bed did not seem to be helpful. But besides that, it's like the day itself has been going good. I haven't felt completely and utterly exhausted, so I must have gotten a little bit of sleep like here and there. I definitely forgot to re-equip my rune. Sometimes my homunculi don't do anything at all. I wonder why that is. I don't have like any other really good leg runes. Like shared pain would be okay, but we're not always pulling two targets. And I don't really think there are many other leg runes. Not for DPS at least. I wonder if it's like a range thing. No, they're just they're just not going in. That's so weird. That one went in. This one's still hanging out back here with me. Their behavior- and then this one, like, this one decided, well, I'm gonna go up here and fight this guy. The homunculi behavior is really, really weird. They're super useful when they work relatively properly. I'm pretty sure he ran- yeah, I see he ran off again. He's like, okay, you're gonna complain about me not going into combat? I'll show you going into combat. And then they pulled everything. I'm also not getting XP from all these guys, so we're not proccing Spirit Tap consistently. Gonna have to be careful with that. We need Grunts as well. And yeah, we are. We are out of mana. Let's go ahead and drink for a second here.
wish they would give you a little bit of control over the homunculi. Like, I don't want a full pet bar, but I, I wish if I, like, when they're summoned out, you should be able to hit the button again, and that should command them to go in on a specific target. Like, maybe when they're out, this becomes, like, a different button, and it just commands them to attack. That would be a really useful functionality of them. Uh, I'm being plucked with arrows. Oh, there's a guy, like, hiding. I, I didn't even see him. He's hiding all the way back here. Oh god. <laughs> Let's just keep running. Let's hope that they don't bother coming after us. Looks like we're good. the worst feeling on a PvP server is running into Horde. I mean, it definitely wakes me up. Yeah. It's, um... It definitely jars me <laughs> into a little bit of a higher level of, of awareness. But so far, we haven't gotten ganked. We, we've come across Horde players a couple of times today. And we've, we've survived, so that's good. How long will that continue? I have no idea. We'll probably be mostly fine, like, in the wetlands. Like, when we get the Stranglethorn, like, then kind of, like, all bets are off. But we, we have a lot of questing between now and Stranglethorn, so... I feel okay about it. And by the time we get into Stranglethorn, I'll probably be ready to run a little bit of Scarlet Monastery. Not like the endless grinding that we did on the Paladin, but I'll probably be ready to do some runs. So if we have a little bit of trouble questing in Stranglethorn, 
we will we'll peel out and do some dungeon runs. feels a little bit like hardcore looking over your shoulder all the time. Yeah, kind of. It, it definitely adds something to the experience. There's a, that additional worry. And like, mainly because, you know, when you get killed by a mob, you just go back and you kill the mob. When you get killed by a player, there's like a 50-50% chance that they will decide to keep killing you over and over again. So... That's why, like, the stakes are a little bit higher when it comes to being killed by a player. They might decide that once is not enough. That's not really the direction I would have wanted him to go if I could have like picked and chosen. Is he gonna pull this entire camp? I don't know. Uh, we got this guy back here is on one of our homunculi. Let's take care of him. We got lucky with the camp not pulling.
Well, this is something. We are out of mana. That's not great. Let's get in here and just give everything a little, a little fear. Send it running in different directions here. If we can kill one of them, we'll proc Spirit Tab. reason this one camp respawns really really fast. It's kind of good for us. Although it would be nice to have the chance to drink a little bit. done with this one. Let's head back and get it turned in. Or, 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 let's just get stuck in combat here. Let me loot while we're in combat, just in case uh, we get more respawns. Let's pull him over here, away from where the respawns will happen, and then we might actually get away. There we go. Well, some of these guys are dropping cloth. That's good. We need cloth. Uh, that's going to be our next way to skill up. Is going to be on silk bolts.
Steven, good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, yeah, Dragon, the, the reason I kind of, like, ended up on this character is because, like, I don't think I need a lot of runes, so yeah. No, the, the, the grind for runes is real. Especially if you want to have a lot of alts. The grind gets real. Watch your back. It's almost like you, you, you don't want to have too many alts, because, yeah, you don't want to do it again and again and again. I, I think oh, this I character, there's only you. there's only like one or two more runes that I'm actually like ever gonna want on this character, and that's kind of reassuring to me. I'm not gonna spend ten hours of my life having to get all my abilities. Yeah, Justin, the priest is a lot of fun. The priest has a very good rhythm to it. It's really like, it's all about penance. The inclusion of penance really changes the vibe of the class and how it feels to press the buttons. It ends up having a really nice flow. Uh, this is interesting. We've managed to pull the entire camp. Now, I don't think we can take out the entire camp. Um, we'll see if we can kill like one or two and then we might we might be running away here uh, Let's see. Yeah, we got everything. We're pretty far from them. Let's just reset them all Maybe we'll end up killing them like one at a time I, I read something the other day about what they're gonna do with characters after the season ends it was a vi maybe I read it on Wowhead. It was a very short little excerpt, and what they said was that season of discovery characters after the season ends will have somewhere interesting to go. And I don't know what that means. I don't. Here's the thing. I don't think they know what it means. I I think that they realize that like a lot of people are not really happy with the idea that after putting all this time into the characters that the character is going to just be unplayed or unplayable after the season ends. So I think I think they're kind of scrambling to figure out like what they want to do for sod characters after the season's over. But they've committed now that they're going to do something interesting. So what in the heck is that going to be? Cuz I always imagine like when the season ends the character's done. That's how seasons are handled in, like, every other game that has seasons. You don't really play, like, if you're playing Diablo or Path of Exile, 
you have a seasonal character, you play it in the season. After that, like, you don't really play those characters. And so I thought, you know, Sod would be the exact same way. But now they've teased that there will be somewhere for them to go that will be interesting. So I, I'm hoping that we get more information about that, like, soon, you know? That'd be good. That could really, that could really change, like, how much time people want to put into seasonal characters if they know what happens to them when the season ends. But yeah, leaving it ambiguous, then it's like, oh, it's a seasonal character, I don't want to spend too much time on them, they're going to be deleted, flushed out of the toilet, but if that's not the case, then there could be more reason to level more alts. Yeah, classic plus. That's kind of what I thought. I thought, like, are they, are they hinting that they would have some kind of classic plus permanent server for sod characters to go where they get to keep all their sod abilities? Because obviously the worst feeling in the world would be, okay, you take your level 60 sod character, you transfer them to a classic era realm, and they lose all those abilities. That you spent 50 hours getting all of your runes, and then all those abilities are gone. Like, that would be awful. And I think they're realizing that. And so they, they have promised that they're going to do something for seasonal characters. Uh, we just don't know what it is yet. But it does seem like some kind of like permanent server... Uh, for seasonal characters to retire to where like they can keep their abilities I don't know <laughs> like I just I worry about I worry about that because then like okay so like it would have to be a type of server where every season's characters can go there you can't keep making a permanent home every single season not if you plan to do multiple seasons you're gonna end up with way too many server types it's the sod retired server. It's the season two retired server and the season three retired server. Like you don't want to have all that going on. So you have to have one place for all season characters to go to after their season ends. And it would make sense for that to be some kind of classic plus because like what level are those characters going to be? Well, most of them, they're going to be level 60. And so, what are you going to do at level 60 that's interesting? Well, you can do Classic Plus content. So, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes, you know? Like, like I said, I don't think that they know yet. And that's why we don't have details. But they did say that some, they would go somewhere interesting. These guys are so hard to pull on their own. But yeah, I read that yesterday. It's good that they're thinking about doing something, though, because, yeah, I, I don't think anybody would be happy uh, with, this, with the characters going to a classic era realm. Like, I, d I never really cared what happened to my character after the season ends. I just assumed that I would not play these characters after the season ended. That was just my assumption going into things. Because that was, like, that was the safest assumption to make. Is that uh, there would be, there would be no future... <laughs> You get to do the level 60 stuff in the season, you get to do that for a few months, the season ends, and then that character's retired. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what they do. I definitely have no desire to transfer my sod character somewhere else and then, like, collect more runes. So I hope that's not part of it. They could, se they could send you to a server where, like, all, all... Imagine they make a bunch of level 60 content, you know? Like, you know, they, they uh... Let's say they make a couple 10-man raids at level 60. Let's say they do a bunch of level 60 stuff. They could send your character somewhere where that, that content still exists. Where you could still farm that content, I guess? Now, like, what would be the point of that? What would be the point of... Of farming more content when the season is technically over? I, I don't know. We probably won't hear, like, any real details until the final phase opens up. I'm hoping by the time the final phase opens that they'll know what's going to happen for sure. And they'll be willing to share details about it. 
All right, three of them. Like three of them. We could we could do that. Do this. He's gonna die. Who's going to return to vanilla or hardcore classic if they open up classic plus servers? Well, nobody. But nobody plays on classic era right now and nobody plays on hardcore right now, so what's the difference? Like, classic era playership is has always been and will always be, like, really low. And right now, hardcore playership is, is really low. Something, something I heard yesterday that really rung true is that hardcore was more for something to, for people to be interested in being entertained by it and, and less so was it something for all players to actually partake in you know what i mean like people were really interested in hardcore the way a lot of people expressed that interest was was by watching people play hardcore uh not necessarily like everybody playing hardcore themselves so like and as far as like regular classic era the playership in regular classic era has always been low um, for some reason people don't really remember a time, but like when BC came out, like no one gave a shit or wanted to play on classic servers at all. The classic servers existed, they were always there, but you would log into them and no one would be playing on them because nobody cared. The only reason people started to care about classic era again in general was because hardcore became popular. When hardcore became popular and really popped off, that was what made people give a crap about the idea of playing a version of the game in Classic Era. So for me, like, there's no real reason to worry about the fact that nobody's gonna play Classic Era. Like, that doesn't really matter, because few people play it anyway. You know? And, and the, the hardcore, is, hardcore is dead in the sense of, like, playership. But yeah, like, the idea that hardcore is more something that's entertaining for people and less something that they want to engage in directly, like, that makes sense. Classic servers always seem full because they, they share, like, a realm. They're, they're all connected. So when you're running around in a classic era realm, you're, you're seeing lots of people, not necessarily because there are a lot of people on that server, but because the servers are clustered together. So even if you're on a low pop or medium pop server, it, it's always going to seem busy. And yeah, there will always be a handful of realms that say high population, because players will always flock to whatever realm says that it has the most people. But in classic era, it doesn't matter because you're, you're sharded together with a bunch of different servers and it's always going to feel and look busy to you. That's kind of the point of that. But like, who, who cares really? Like, it's, it's good to have seasons and to have Classic Plus because, you know, like Classic Era, there's only so much content to do. You can level up a character to 1 to 60 and you can do some 40 man raids and you can PvP. It's, it's a very limited amount of content that appeals to a very limited amount of people. Whereas uh, Seasons and Classic Plus, that kind of content is going to appeal to more people. Just by the nature of it. Cam okay, Spidey, good afternoon, good morning to you, welcome to the stream.
Now, the other thing I read yesterday was unfortunate, and that was that they, they intend to keep 40-man raiding. In Season of Discovery, there will be 40-man raids at level 60. As a person who loathes 40-man raids, I, I was not very happy to hear that. I had been hoping for 10-man versions of, uh, of the raids that I would never do because I have no interest in 40-man raiding. I have no interest in recruiting, organizing, pugging 40 people. And like ultimately I have no interest in content where half of the raid can die, but the run can still be successful. So I wasn't very happy about that. I feel like with with Saab they're trying to make like everybody happy. They're trying to go on both sides of every issue to make every single player happy. They're like, oh, of course we're gonna keep 40 man raids. Oh, but also there will be there will be other raids as well. They're, they're trying to do a lot to make sure, like, they don't upset anybody. Because, yeah, like, I hate 40-man raids. I think they're stupid. But there are tons of people who feel like that's, like, the best way to raid. And so, yeah, unfortunately, we are going to have 40-man raids at level 60. I'm hoping we also get 10-man versions of them. Um, but, yeah, we, we'll see. Now, the thing about 40-man raids, though, is, like, half the people can die, and the people that know what they're doing can carry the group. Maybe not so much back in the day when people were bad at the game, but nowadays, like, you don't, you don't need everyone alive. That's my problem with it. If you have a 10-man raid, and two people die, that could grossly affect the outcome of the fight. If you have a 40-man raid, and five people die, like, that's not gonna matter. If your other people are competent, you're still gonna down the boss. It's it's too many people for everyone's input to be meaningful. Unless you just absurdly scale up the difficulty way beyond what the difficulty is naturally scaled at, because those raids are not hard. There's nothing inherently hard about those fights. And so you take 40 people and 10 of them die in the first two minutes. The other third, unless like all of your tanks or healers die, then you can still clear the fights just fine. It's too many people to organize. But also, it's not meaningful to have all those people in the raid. There's way too much leeway in that situation. Like, how many, even in like a 25 man raid, you can lose like five, six, seven people, and the rest of the people, if they know what they're doing, can just kill the bosses. And then you're dragging along six or seven people who can die in the first couple minutes of the fight. I don't know. I, I don't find it fun. I find it just a giant cluster. And the, the concept of raids that big have never been appealing to me. Am I gonna run a goblin on Kata? Um, I'm gonna do the goblin starting area as a recorded series just so people can see the starting area, but I have no interest in goblins. I'm, I'm gonna level up a worgen hunter. And the worgen hunter is 
probably going to be the class that I just play in Cataclysm. I don't I don't think I'm going to have a lot of time for a bunch of alts in Cata. So I'm going to try to play just one character and have that be the character I take through the expansion. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to I'm going to check out the goblin starting area, the troll starting area, and the, and the gnome starting because they all got new starting areas in Cata. So I'll check those out. I'll make I'll make series uh, for the starting areas so people can see that stuff and so I can see it. But as far as like long term playing a goblin, nah, I hate goblins. I hate goblins and like when the horde got, I was a horde player back in the day. That was the only faction I was allowed to play. So when the horde got goblins, like I was pretty offended because I think they're a pretty stupid race to have. Especially like when the alliance got worgen, it was it was kind of a slap in the face. I remember what the I remember the point of the goblin starting area. I, I remember the overarching story of it, which is that we destroy it through our stupidity. <laughs> it's basically like a joke. Yeah, the, the goblins are just a joke race, and that's fine if, if for people that like jokes in their video games. I don't know. It doesn't really appeal to me. On the one hand you have goblins, which are just a joke, and on the other hand you have worgen, which are awesome. So it's it's kind of uh, kind of unbalanced. Pronate, if you want to invite to the guild, man, just do a uh, do a slash who for rambling ramblers. 
and you should just be able to whisper somebody who's on. Like anybody on right now should be able to give you an invite. This is the Lone Wolf server. The U.S. Lone Wolf, that's right. Uh, the EU and the U.S. servers have the same names. So this is uh, U.S. Lone Wolf.
All right, it's probably time that we head to Menethil Harbor and actually start picking up some of the quests down that way. This quest is going to take a while. These guys are in stealth. They're hard to find. The game doesn't spawn too many of them in at a time. And they're typically all farmed out, so I'm not going to rush to get this one done. And it's level 26, so like ideally, like I don't even have to work on this right now. And I probably shouldn't be working on it right now. I need to prioritize level 21, level 22, level 21. Yeah, we need to head over to town here. Is there a looking for guild channel? I don't know. I am not sure. Doesn't look like it. Looking for group, world defense. That's it. Do I use any add-ons? Yeah, we're using a few add-ons. We're using Questy for quest tracking. We're using Bagnon for combined inventory. We're using Leatrix Plus. Uh, that is automatically vendoring our junk. It's also automatically repairing us whenever the vendor is capable of repairing us. Uh, Leatrix also handles flight timers and a couple of other things. But yeah, Bagnon, Leatrix, Questy, those are the big ones. I try not to use a bunch of add-ons and I try not to use anything that drastically alters my UI. What's on your mind? Safe travels. No, be good. How are you? See you soon. Alex, good afternoon, man. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. I'm not going to grab everything here yet. I, I mainly want to grab stuff that I think I'm going to work on now. How are you? Keep your feet on the ground. How are you?
Um, at some point I got a 10 slot bag. I don't remember getting that or where it came from, but okay. I will take it. Safe travels. You got my attention? Lael, good afternoon, man. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for being here.
I've actually never completed this quest by fighting them in the lake. Apparently the lake is the place to be. It's much better than trying to find them along the road. So I'm going to head right back and turn this one in. That way it's done, we can grab the follow-up. Greetings. Is this the same priest I played in phase one? Yes. Mm -hmm. For the Alliance. Yep, this is our priest on Lone Wolf. Be careful. Let's keep our eyes open for Gobbler. He's gonna be around here somewhere. And there he is. Lail all the time, man. All the time. It's pretty common. Last night I didn't really sleep at all. <laughs> so I, I woke up I woke up wondering if I had even slept. But yeah, all the time. Your your brain isn't supposed to remember dreams. Your brain is programmed to to basically delete them. It's like temporary RAM storage. It's supposed to just wipe it as soon as you wake up. So the, the times that you remember your dreams, that's actually the fluke. There we 
go. Level 27. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna keep putting points and improve Mind Blast. It's not really helping us right now. Maybe sometime down the road it will be useful. Right now we're not using it on cooldown, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, these guys are not for the quest. That's a little bit out of the range of the quest. How often do I go to the gym? Never. Not right now, anyway. These days I work out at home. There have been times in my life when I've gone to the gym. Back when I used to work at an office, I went to the gym every single day. Now I just work out at home. The gym gets annoying. What happens when you go to the gym frequently is like people start to try to talk to you there because they, they see you every day. They start to recognize you and then for some reason they start to like try to talk to you. As soon as like too many people start trying to talk to me on a daily basis, I peace out. I, I stopped going. But also it's just more convenient to do it at home. The other thing that happens is like at home I can I can work out for 30 minutes and be done. But when I go to the gym, I'm always there for like way too long. One thing leads to another, and then I've been there for like two hours. It's just not really worth it at my age. Uh, do I want to run out and do Sida's bag? Maybe. But I, I think also... Maybe I should set my hearthstone first. Eh, let's just head out. Let's head out and see. What kind of exercise do I do? I lift weights. Yeah, I just lift weights. I got a bunch of dumbbells and I lift weights. I, I, I'm not I'm not as into it. Like 10 years ago, I'd have talked your ear off about it. But I'm 40 years old and the only reason I do it anymore is out of sheer habit. I really don't care that much these days. The only reason I get workouts in anymore is because I've had 20 years of doing workouts. And so after 20 years of doing a thing, your brain doesn't really just let you stop doing it. For the past couple weeks, I've just been working out every other day. Every, every other day has been good. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> what, what I realize is that it, it doesn't matter. You, you can work out every single day of your life. One day, you're gonna die. One day, you're gonna get skin cancer, or you're gonna get hit by a car, or a crate at a Lowe's is gonna fall on you and crush you out of existence. Or, you'll live to 100 and you'll still die. Like, so, like, recently, I just have, I just don't care as much anymore. I, I do it because it's a habit. And that's about it. You started two months ago, yeah. Give it 20 years. Like, I've been weightlifting longer than a lot of people have been alive. A, a, a lot longer than a lot of adults have been alive, so... And I cared about it for a long time. It's only been like the last five years that I just don't really care. Yeah, you just get your your brain gets used to a routine after so long, and then it tells you. Basically, your brain will scream at you and tell you that you're doing something wrong if you don't do it. 
And so to avoid my brain screaming at me and telling me that I'm doing something wrong, I still work out. If I was the last person on the planet and all I had to do all day was nothing, I would still work out. Because my brain is just addicted to the motion of it and to the endorphins I get when I do it. Am I married? Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. But me, me not caring about working out did not coincide with when I got married. <laughs> I've been married for 10 years. And I haven't cared about working out for the past few years. The, the two were not connected. As it is with most people. Like most people, those two things are connected. But in my case, they're not. Yeah, I'd been weightlifting for 10 years already before I got married, so it was already like a it was already a deep rutted habit that I was not about to break. And that I, and that I still don't break, you know, I still do it. I just don't do it with the same vigor. And I, and I don't give as many shits about it anymore. We went to the pool the other day and I did laps. And that that seemed interesting. I think part of it is obviously you get bored of stuff. So like I, we went to the pool and I swam laps and that was cool. I, I, I might I look forward to kind of doing more of that. That'd be a good supplement, like less weightlifting, more more swimming. Yeah, in, in classic era pronate, you got to be on the same realm. This is Lone Wolf US. And like the worst thing about working out for me is like, you know, some people work out because they play a sport or because they do some kind of other physical activity. Like I've worked out for 20 years and I've never, I've never done anything with it. I d it's not necessary. I, I don't use it for anything. I don't play sports. Like the only real physical things I do outside of working out is like I, I hike sometimes. So like, you know, I've been weightlifting for 20 years, but like I don't use it. It's not valuable to me. Dragon, everybody here knows that I'm married. <laughs> Most of the people do. No one cares. If that if that was gonna happen, it would have happened long ago. Yeah, it's not a secret, right? My viewership has dropped by half recently for like, you know, not, no real discernible reason. Probably because I'm just like a negative asshole most of the time. It's probably why my viewership has dropped by half recently. Or just, or just less hype for the game. I don't know. I, I never know what it is. It's probably a combination of me being me and, and also like less hype. But I, I can half my membership by doing nothing. Like it's just, it, it's already happened. You know, a few weeks ago, we might have been at like 140. We're at 80 right now. So, it's just one of those things. Mike, happy Sunday, man. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, side is bag. Basically, like, whenever I play different versions of the game, like, I lose people. Like, oh, he's playing retail. Boom, lost some people. Oh, he's playing Wrath of the Lich King. Oh, crap, lost some people. Oh, he's back to Sod. Lost some people. <laughs> people are uh, people are very finicky about the things they want to see and don't want to see. 
and, and I just tend to play like whatever I want to play on a given day and that doesn't work for like a lot of people a lot of people want to see the same thing every day same character over and over forever and they just want that like consistency and that's like never really been how I never been how I played the game I, I play the game like I wake up that day and then like whatever version I want to play whatever I want to do that day that's what I try to do that doesn't work for a lot of people apparently Yeah, I don't get super hyped for anything anymore. I just play the thing that I'm in the mood for. Yeah, I'm never like incredibly hyped. Even on the uh, even on the eve of like big releases, like I don't I don't get incredibly hyped anymore. So I, I just try to play whatever I think I'm gonna have fun with that day. Oh man, I feel like I'm never gonna find 12 of these guys. Maybe I should head back into this area. If, I, if I'm really serious about hunting these down, I should probably come over this way. Yeah, I almost played Wrath today. I almost played Wrath. See, that's what I mean. It's like, I don't know. Like, sometimes I don't know what I'm going to do until I sit down to schedule the stream. But yeah, I almost I almost logged into Wrath and started playing a Wrath character. If I started playing Wrath again, there there would be half again as many people. Like, boom, we'd be down, we'd be down from 80 people to 40 people. But it very nearly happened. Keep telling myself, just wait for wait for Cataclysm pre-patch. Just wait for Cataclysm pre-patch. That's what I keep telling myself. But then again, once we're in Cataclysm pre-patch, like, Wrath is basically over. I don't know, it's tricky. Yeah, luckily they had en enough stuff going on between Hardcore and Sod that, you know, Wrath got, to, Wrath got to live a long time. Wrath got its its full two years of life. Now granted, they kind of rushed the Ruby Sanctum out. Ruby Sanctum did not get its own patch. And originally, Ruby Sanctum got its own patch. So they rushed the content out a little bit. But they didn't rush the expansion. It, it got to live and die. And I think, like, by now, it is, like, very thoroughly dead. And I don't know if, uh, if Cataclysm is gonna bring that version of the game back or not. We'll have to see. A lot of people are very vocal about how they don't, they're not interested in Cataclysm. I'm just kind of hoping that there's, like, a very silent majority of people who are excited for Cataclysm. Because the people who are vocal will just tell you flat out that they're not interested, that they're not gonna play it.
Will the Wrath service cease to exist when Cata comes out? Yeah, probably. They ha they haven't said so, like, flat out. I'm sure we'll find out for sure, like, soon. The Burning Crusade server ceased to exist when Wrath came out. The problem is you can't... You, you already have too many versions of the game to play. So... If you, if you were to leave some Wrath servers open, it just creates confusion amongst, like, people new coming into the game. It splits the player base up. Uh, which, you know, you could say is good or bad, depending on your point of view. Yeah, I don't think they'll leave Wrath open. I think that we'll just progress. We'll just progress into Kata, and then we'll progress into, uh, into Mist of Pandaria. And then we'll progress into Warlords of Draenor. Like, they need to, they need to wrap their head around the idea of, of progression servers. You know, like... EverQuest, every once in a while, EverQuest will do like a fresh start progression server roll up where like it starts with the base game and then every three months the next expansion comes out. And that's what Blizzard need to really think about. So they need to think about the concept of having like rotating uh, progression servers so that people, so that every year or so you could get, you could level through your favorite expansion. You know, you start with vanilla, three months later, BC content comes out, now you're in BC. Three months later, Wrath con And like, obviously there'd probably have to be experience buffs for people to level like quickly enough for that, but I feel like having a progression server that kind of rotates yearly would be a good idea. And it would probably be like a more sustainable long-term than just pushing out like classic expansion after expansion after expansion until we're stuck in, like, BFA Classic. About to go into, like, Shadowlands Classic. You know, like, nobody wants that. So maybe you run a progression server from vanilla through mop. I don't think you go into Warlords of Draenor. I don't think we should ever have a Warlords of Draenor Classic. I don't think that makes any sense. But I feel like there would be an audience for vanilla through mop. And then that would probably be about it. Yeah, right now they're just going through like they're going to do all of them, but like that's not a good idea and it, it's not what they should do. They should stop at Mist, and then they should have certain servers that reset and that progress through all the expansions uh, every three months. The next one comes out. And then that would be little, that would be like a year and a half. You'd have a year and a half you'd get through Mr. Pandaria and then reset and then a year and a half reset and that way every year and a half you can kind of go on that journey again but they probably wouldn't do progression servers and seasons you know there's like only so many things you can do at one time If it's every two years, you don't have to wait till 2065 for BFA Classic. You know? By 2026, you'll have Mist of Pandaria. By 2028, you'll have Warlords of Draenor. It's, uh, you know, it would be, it would come faster than you think it would. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be 2065, it'd be like 2030. By 2032, you'll be in Shadowlands Classic. Uh, we know we have this quest for the giant crocolisk. I, I have not been able to complete this quest in a very long time. These guys are always like completely farmed out. The game spawns in about five of them. This is the only area in the zone or anywhere where you can find them. Uh, like this guy here, he doesn't count. Yeah, it's, it spawns in like five, so I don't know if we'll do this one. I've skipped this quest on like every character I've leveled in recent memory. Because it's, it's impossible to find all these guys. Luckily, we got the, the stealth guys, we got all those. But the Crocolis, we're probably not going to be able to do. I'll run around here for a minute and we'll see if any of them spawn back in.
<laughs> Shadowlands Classic, Dear God, won't someone think of the children? Yeah. We should think of the people who did not play Shadowlands, and we should never... Sub anyone who missed Shadowlands, like, we should never subject them to it. Like, at all. You guys see what I mean about these crocolisks, right? We're, we're running up and down the quest area, but there, there aren't any crocolisks, so I think I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna go back to town and turn some stuff in. something? Great to meet ya. Watch your back. Yeah, JK, we're back on our Sod Priest. Yeah, this is the priest from Phase 1 that we leveled up over on Lone Wolf. Mm-hmm. Well met. Light bless you. Go with honor, friend. I think we have to go visit the excavation team, and then we have to go back out to the Green Warden to turn his quest in. But before I do any of that, I'm going to AFK real fast. I got a bio. I will be right back.
I guess I could go up here and uh, we can do this. We don't need to do it. It's a higher level, but we might as well. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why we got all these guys, but I am, uh, I'm not going to try to fight them. We're just going to try to leash them. That one's going to die. That's fine. You guys can just run away. That's okay. These, I'm, I'm never going to leash all these guys. Oof. There we go. Yeah, Daniel, the retail's not bad for what it is. I, I think the problem is like people who play a lot of classic like don't play retail. And it's easy to have a bad opinion of a game that you don't even play. It's remarkably easy just to be like, oh, retail, retail's garbage. I only play classic. Classic's a real game. Like, it's easy to get into that mindset. Like, as a classic player who doesn't play retail. It, it took me, like, time investing into playing retail before I was able to realize the things about it that I do like. But, like, in order to feel like I liked any part of it, I had to play it first. But yeah, it's really easy while you don't play it just to hate it, basically. It's best to just try to think of them as like two different games and not like, it's not like an either or. They're not an either or, they're just two remarkably different games. That's how I, that's how I cope with it. Uh, somewhere around here there's an item to click on. Here we go. Alright, so I think that's it. Yeah, let, let's head over this way. We'll try to do like a straight shot and see how many murlocs we could pull after us. Justin, that's that's surprising. Yeah, we have a few people who play Wrath still, but 
I don't think we have many. I don't anticipate many people playing that version of the game until Cataclysm comes out. Yeah, JK's playing Wrath. I almost played Wrath today. And then I decided to get on Sod instead. I think for me, like, the, the biggest problem that I have fundamentally with, with the Season of Discovery is the enforced level caps. I, I think I could even, like, I could even forgive rune acquisition eventually. But I, I don't like being stopped in my leveling journey artificially. I, I don't, like, I don't know why. You would think I would like it, because then I could, like, play more alts, but realistically... I like playing a character for as long as I want to play the character, and, and I don't I don't like them saying, "Well, that's it. You're 25. You're done for now. You're 40. You're done for now." Like, for someone like me who like plays a lot of alts, all that does is it gives me an opportunity to quit a character. Like, don't give me an opportunity to quit a character. I'll quit a character all on my own. You let me level the character as much as I want. <laughs> don't artificially create a moment of disengagement whereby you tell me that I cannot level anymore. Because if, if you create that disengagement, I will disengage. I will disengage faster than anyone you've ever seen. And so that's kind of like one of my fundamental issues that are, are going to be like ongoing with Saad. It's like I could get really into this character and I could really enjoy my time playing it, but then eventually I'm going to hit 40. And then there's really not going to be a lot for me to do. Whereas, like, if there weren't an artificial level band in place, if I was having a great time, I can just keep going with my journey. That's kind of, like, the, the problem that I have. That I'm probably going to continue to have overall throughout the season. Yeah, as someone who doesn't really care, I don't care if I raid Nomergon. I, I didn't really care about raiding BFD, although I did it a few times. And so I, I think I'm always going to have these moments... Where like I disengage a little bit, What's on your mind? just because I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be stopped. Like, you know, the, the leveling is going to stop. They are going to stop me at 40, and then they're going to stop me again at 50. You know, it's How really it's you? really strange. Keep your feet on the ground. What can I do for you? I thought I thought I would like that aspect of it, but I I don't. It turns out that I don't like that aspect of it. Uh, we need to just like let's let's dump our quest. Let's dump this quest at least. Um, that's really all. I, I I don't really need these raid quests. Like, am I gonna do these quests? Probably not. I'll keep the completed one. I can get a ring out of that. I'm gonna drop the others. There we go. How are you? Am I gonna play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? No, I n I haven't even played the Final soon. Fantasy VII remake yet. I've watched a let's play of it. <laughs> I will watch somebody else play it, most likely. Uh, that's which is super unfortunate. Like Final Fantasy VII is maybe my favorite game of all time. Yep, Final Fantasy VII is probably like it's the game that got me into RPGs, like really into RPGs. And so, like not having not been able to play the remake, like I don't have a PS5. Even now that PS5s are available, I'm not I'm not gonna spend the money on one because like pretty soon the PS6 is gonna come out. Like, so yeah, unfortunately I'm not going to get to play it. It's a major bummer. Will it be on PC eventually? I mean, I'm sure it'll be on PC eventually. Did the did the first part ever come out to PC? I, I don't even know. Yeah, they'll, they'll probably put it on PC. Like, Final Fantasy XV came out to PC. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if there were plans to bring 16 out to PC or not, but they probably will do that too. Yeah, I, I could just wait and play it, but I, you know, I'll just watch somebody else play it. Unfortunately, that'll be how I engage with it. It sucks to, like, that would be the only game that I really would want to play on the PS5. It's why I haven't bought a PS5. It, I, I'm kind of past the point in my life where I can justify buying an entire console so I can play one game on it. And that's what I'd be doing. I'd be buying a console to play one game. I just can't, I can't do it. The first part is on PC, yeah. It probably, it probably runs like trash garbage though. I feel like they never do a good job of optimizing those games for the PC when they drop them on PC. They're like, here it is! It's on the PC! Good luck, everybody! And then it just runs like ass. Or like, at least it won't, it won't run as good as it would run on a PS5, you know? And like, I only have so much time to play video games, and, and I can't play that on my channel. Like, if I play Final Fantasy VII on my channel, like, my no one's gonna watch it. And if I can't play it on the channel, then I, 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 I don't have any time to play, like, basically. I, I don't have the time I can commit to play, like, games when I'm not playing them on the channel. There's only so many hours in a day. What I've learned is like those those really like story driven games that's all about like the narrative like nobody wants to watch me play stuff like that. They're either going to play it themselves or they already have like their favorite like immersive story game person to watch, you know. Nobody wants to watch me play those kinds of games. I I've I've been able I've tried enough games on my channel to know that that's true. I, I get annoyed watching other people play Final Fantasy VII though, because like, they don't know as much about the game as I do. <laughs> so like, some like I, I watched Christopher Odd play the the remake. Like, dude doesn't know his Final Fantasy, and it, like parts of that were like really really annoying for me. Because like I played Final Fantasy VII like the original game, I probably played that all the way through like twenty times. I got all of Cloud's limit breaks in the train graveyard, except for the one that you have to go to the Golden Saucer to get. Like, I, I farmed up all of the fucking limit breaks in the train graveyard, which is like the fourth area that you go to in the game. That's how obsessed with the game I was. And so, like, watching someone else play it is, like, kind of unsatisfying. But at the same time, I don't have time to play it myself. No, you can't, you can't just do what you want on YouTube. <laughs> That's a good sentiment. That's a good sentiment to have, just do what you want. You can't, unless you just want to destroy your channel, you really can't do that. You, you, you are, you do have to listen to, like, what YouTube is telling you, and you have to, like, do what the algorithm says. Unless you just want to trash your channel stats. Like, yeah, then you can play whatever you want. Like, you can do that. It's, like, at your own discretion. Your, your channel will probably never recover from it. But you could. Yeah. Yeah, you could do whatever you want, and then, like, what people don't understand about YouTube, and I, I probably talk about this too much. Some of you guys have heard this rant before. YouTube does not treat videos or uploads in isolation. So, if I play Final Fantasy VII and it does really bad, it's not just that that series is going to do bad. The algorithm then will not push any of my content to people. It will say, whoa, this video did shit, so you know what? Your WoW videos, we're, we're gonna show that to less people. And less people, and less people, and less people. And then over time, you stop growing your channel, you stop growing your community, you don't find new people, and you don't grow. 
uh, because YouTube does not treat your videos in isolation. It, it treats them all the same. If you put out an underperforming series and you keep up with that underperforming series, you will see your numbers on all of your content drop way off really fast. Um, it just the algorithm just will not. It won't even show content that used to do well. It'll stop showing that content to people. Uh, trust me, it, it's happened. My, my channel doesn't grow because I, I sometimes will try games that are not popular. And that's one of the biggest reasons why my channel is still really, really, really tiny. Because there have been games, like Last Epoch, like right now I'm playing Last Epoch. I'm having fun with that game. Uh, no one's watching me play that game. And so what's going to happen eventually is I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to keep playing it on the channel. Is because it, it's going to start hurting my other content. Which sucks because then we, we can't grow the community. Basically, my channel is an MMORPG channel. And MMORPGs, like, they, like, that's it. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of worthwhile MMORPGs. And there are not, like, new MMORPGs that come out. Like, when New World first came out, New World did amazing for my channel. It just so happened that New World sucked when it came out. So, like, I can only play so much of it because the game just really wasn't great. Uh, but it did really well because it fit into the formula that the algorithm had decided, you know, this is what this channel is about, this channel is about MMORPGs, so New World did really well. But of all the games I've tried in the past, like, three years, besides WoW, New World has been the only game that has done well on my channel. And, and I've tried lots of games. <laughs> You'll, you'll see them pop up on the channel every once in a while. Every once in a while I'll come across a game I really, really like. And, and I'll just throw it out there so you guys can see it. But they never do well. They're never gonna... There's never gonna be a League of Legends MMO. <laughs> don't be a person... Don't be the person that's waiting for a League of Legends MMO. Because it's never gonna... It's never gonna come out. It, you probably, it probably won't even get into Alpha. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not already cancelled. Do you know how many people Riot fired recently? Like, basically half of their fucking company got fired. Ghostcrawler, the guy they brought over who used to work for Blizzard to like, man that game, to do that game, like he quit. He quit before the people got fired. There is never going to be a, a Riot MMORPG. In, in the same way that Ashes of Creation is never going to release to the public. In the same way that Pantheon Rise of the Fallen is never going to release to the public. Nor will there be a League of Legends MMO that releases to the public. And if it does, it's like 8 to 10 years off. It's hard to care about something or look forward to something that's 8 to 10 years away. There's a high likelihood that I will be dead by then. So... <laughs> The, there's an equal likelihood that in 10 years I will be dead as there is that the, that the League of Legends MMO will actually release. You don't want to be the person waiting for that. You do not want to be the person waiting for that. You have no idea how big of an undertaking making an MMORPG is. How much it costs and then how little it returns. Unless you resort to the kinds of business practices and in-game purchases that people hate. And that's it. it. It's just not... the MM, MMORPG is not really like a real genre of game anymore. MMORPG applies to like the five MMOs that are out that do okay. And we probably won't see the ranks of MMOs grow anytime soon. Be happy that we have seven different versions of WoW to play. Because you're not getting new MMOs like anytime in the future. It's sad, but it's the reality of it.
<laughs> I'm curious how you ended up here. <laughs> how did you get here? What are you doing? New World was exciting when it first came out. It was exciting because it was actually an MMO being released to the public. That's the reason why it was so exciting for everybody. That's the reason why it did well on my channel. Is because it was actually an MMORPG that actually got released to 1.0, full release. It was an actual game. It just wasn't an actual game that was done yet. It needed about one more year baking in the oven. And Amazon did not want to give it that time. So they put the game out a year early. It had obviously like things wrong with it. It was obviously an incomplete product. Within a, the span of one more year, they had gone back. They had basically completely reworked the, the campaign. The campaign was all different. The questing was different. A lot of the systems were different. Over the course of that year, they, they made the game that should have released on day one. Uh, but because they rushed it out, it was garbage. But yeah, it, it was a lot of excitement. When it, when it existed, because it was like, we were just shocked that an actual MMO was coming out. That was new. It was like a very novel concept that someone would develop an MMO, make an MMO, and then they would also release it to the public, because we haven't seen that before. All we've seen like in the last 10 years is just MMOs go into development, they get crowdfunded, they get crowdfunded, they get crowdfunded, they never, they never release. They don't even fucking go into, into alpha or beta. They just sit there in development hell. Every once in a while, the developers put out like a cool new video. Look at this world boss. Oh, we got world bosses and they're so cool. Yeah, it's cool. Like the seven of you can fight a world boss and make a video out of it. But the rest of us will probably never get to play your game. But yeah, keep taking money from people. That's really cool. And then like the more games that do that, like MMOs kind of get a bad rap. Like the more MMOs that come out in their shit, or they never come out, like the whole genre kind of gets a bad reputation. And then people don't engage with the genre because they think, well, MMOs are shit. When MMOs do come out, they're bad. See New World. Uh, otherwise, they, they take millions of dollars from people and they never come out. See Ashes of Creation and, uh, and Rise of the Fallen, Pantheon, Rise of the Fallen. So yeah, they just get a bad reputation. And then everyone goes back to playing WoW or FF14 or Elder Scrolls, like whatever their flavor is of like existing MMO. And eventually all these games are going to be ancient and no one's going to care. Mendy, happy Sunday. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. I don't think I'm going to go after this quest right now. It's level 28. 
I, I'd rather save as many quests as I can. We'll turn in Ormer's Revenge. Uh, what was the other one that we completed? This one. M this also returns to Menethil Harbor. Okay. Good, good, good. Alpha T, good afternoon, man. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. Attention, off with you. Be good. Oh, you know what? We we have to make our way out to the Green Warden. Yeah, let's. It's a bit of a trek, but we do have to get that turned in. Otherwise, I'm going to forget to do it. Let, let's go get that done. I want to get everything turned in here, and then I think we have to head back to Duskwood. We're starting to get some green quests to do in Duskwood. And I do want to keep up with just trying to focus on green quests, as long as we have them. Eventually, we'll probably run out of green quests. But uh, while we have them, we'll focus on them. Tactical, good afternoon, man. I, I appreciate that. Am I going to max out Athos and Ren Rambles before Kata? Maybe. I might. I might. And there's more likelihood that I'll play the warrior than the priest, but we'll see. We will see. I don't. I really don't know what I want to do with Kata because it's hard for me to gauge like how how excited I am to play it and. All that stuff, you know, like most people, when people talk about Kata, like no one's really excited for it. And that kind of worries me from like a content perspective. Like if when, if when people talk about Kata, it's like with discouragement and just like they don't care, they're not excited, it's not going to be fun. Like it doesn't really bode well for uh, 
planning to make a bunch of content or do a bunch of characters in Kata. So I, I kind of have had to like scale back my expectations for like what Cataclysm is going to be for the channel and for me. Like right now the only thing I'm committing to for Kata is that I'm going to roll up a Worgen Hunter. Uh, starting with the pre-patch and then I'm going to play the Worgen Hunter. And like if I can play anything else then great. Um, but I'm not counting on the environment to be one where I get to play a bunch of characters. Because yeah, people don't seem... People seem very pessimistic and not very excited for Cataclysm. Part part of that is because of Sod. Now that there's like an alternative classic, like people are even less excited for Cataclysm. So I, I really don't know what's going to happen with it. Yeah, like yeah, maybe for people like that didn't play it, maybe they're excited about it. Nah, I feel though I feel like that mentality of like cataclysm isn't classic because they changed the old world like that seeps through even to people who didn't play cataclysm originally so you know because like even if you didn't play cataclysm originally if you play retail at all a lot of people have still seen the cataclysm zones you know they're, they're gonna find a lot of that stuff familiar because if they've leveled through the old world at all in retail in the past like 10 years then they've already seen the Cata stuff and like they don't know it like what they didn't see was probably like you know Twilight Highlands and the level 80 to 85 stuff they might not have seen but the world revamp they've seen so it really comes down to just if, if they're excited to see the end game zones and the raids and stuff yeah, the world changed, but it, it became what the world is in retail. So if, if you've seen the old world in retail at all, then you've seen the Cataclysm revamp. So for a lot of people, it's new, but it's not necessarily going to be new if you're like a long-time retail player. But you're like new to Classic. So I don't know. Like, even even Blizzard doesn't seem very excited about it. <laughs> it's, it it's, it's hard, you know, to get excited about it. They were like, one of their bullet points was like, faster leveling! They have l so little to say about Cataclysm that at BlizzCon, on the single slide that they showed for Cataclysm, one of the bullet points was faster leveling. Like, oh shit, that's a selling point now? <laughs> that's what people have to be excited about in Cataclysm? Faster leveling? Well, damn, okay. I can, I can play retail and level quickly, you know? So, I don't know. I, I hope it comes out and people like it and we have fun with it, but it's hard to say. And also, like, right, right around that time, like, if you look at the two roadmaps for Classic and for Retail, and you look at them together, there's so much stuff that comes out, like, basically in the same time period. Y you're going to have, like, Phase 3 of Sod, then you're going to have Kata, but then on the heels of that, you're going to have the last phase of Sod, and then right on the heels of that, you're going to have War Within release. There's going to be so many things coming out over, like, the spring, the summer, and the autumn that it's going to be like World of Warcraft Overload. And, like, what parts of the game are people going to like and all that? And what parts of the game are people going to not give a crap about? Of anything that's coming out <laughs> over the spring, summer, and autumn, the thing that's most likely for people to not care about is Cataclysm. Like, people are going to keep playing Sod. People are excited about Sod. People are going to play War Within because people are excited for War Within. Uh, but the thing that, that could easily get left behind and left out of all the hype is going to be Cataclysm, partially because I, I don't think Blizzard even knows how to create hype for Cataclysm. How do you create hype for it? What do you do? You know, when we were going from vanilla to BC to, to Wrath to Cata, it made sense because that was the version of Classic that you were going to have to play, but now we have other versions of Classic. Now we have Sod, now we have Hardcore, like... There's so many ways to play the game that I think that even they have trouble figuring out how to make people excited for it. It's almost like they're just doing it to do it. They're like, oh yeah, Cataclysm Classic. 
and eventually Mr. Pandaria Classic for people who like that kind of thing. It, it does feel like something that they're just doing now and like that they're not even really excited about. Yeah, why would I play Cat if I could play Cat at Time Walking in retail? Yeah, it is the same thing, Daniel. You, you, while well, you have access to the same zones, yeah, you could do Cataclysm Time Walking, and then you can go into like the Twilight Highlands, and like I don't, I don't even remember what the zones are called. They're, they weren't, they weren't very memorable besides the Twilight Highlands. Yeah, you could do gold and do the level eighty to eighty-five stuff in retail today. And you can, and you can do the, and like I said, the entire old world, no matter what version of time walking you pick in retail, if you go to Elwyn Forest, or Westfall, or, or Teldrassil, those zones are the Cataclysm zones, they always have been since the revamp. Hi. And so yeah, like, you can go do that today. You know? And so yeah, we'll see. Uh, like I said, I don't think it's gonna be very hype. Nemo, have I played any hardcore recently? I didn't, but I like I almost played hardcore today. I almost did. There were three things I was gonna do today. I almost played hardcore. I almost played Wrath, and I settled on Sod. Yeah, it was close though. I almost I almost played hardcore today, just like I almost logged in and started the character in Wrath today. Today was like a very uh, ambivalent. It was a very ambivalent sort of day. I think I'm using that word correctly. I went back and forth. I went back and forth about. I was logging into different characters and like trying to feel out what I really, really wanted to do today. And uh, I settled on Saad, but it was a close one. King's honor, friend. It was close. Be careful. What I thought about hardcore, like the biggest reason I didn't play hardcore today, I was like, well, like, like Cell Found's coming out on the 29th, so like, I don't know if anyone's interested in that or not, but it, it felt like a weird choice to play hardcore today, so I didn't do it. Be sad, dog. Good afternoon, man. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I almost got on my uh, my forty level forty eight hunter. No, be good. See you soon. Yeah, Dragon, I'm in the same boat, man. Like, it, I would I would be hype for it. If they had, if it was a fresh start server that was self-found server type, then I'd be hyped for it. I'd be really, I'd be excited. Not like super excited, but I would be actually excited a little bit. How are ya? But with it just being a checkbox, like, I don't know if I just need another hardcore character with a little checkbox that says I'm not going to use the auction house and I'm not going to use the mailbox. Like, I don't know if I really need to do that. I'm, I'm very on the fence about it. Uh, I might start a character, and then we'll see if people are interested in watching it. And if it's something that interests people, and if it's something that I'm having an okay time with, then I don't mind doing it. But I just don't know, like, how much people are interested in Hardcore anymore. Or, or if Hardcore is dead. Part of me thinks that, like, Hardcore might be popular for people just to watch and enjoy, whereas, like, a lot of people are not playing Hardcore. Like, th I think that, like, I think the, the time of a lot of people playing Hardcore has come and gone. But I do feel like maybe it is still interesting as like a spectator sport. So I, I might try it out. And we will just, we'll have to see and kind of like play it by ear. Because I, I only have so much time. And like, I, I can enjoy multiple versions of the game, but I, I'd like to enjoy the version of the game that everyone else is also enjoying. So we'll see how it goes. I think if I if I do the solo if I do the cell phone stuff I'll, I might just do a recorded series though. I, I don't know if I'm gonna stream it. We'll we'll see. Yeah, it, no, it's it's not gonna be a server type. No, and I don't know if everyone knows this or not, but if you're out there and you think, like, I can't wait for self-found, um, it's not a new server. You're going to be playing hardcore on the same servers we're already playing hardcore on, but when you make your character, you're going to check a little box that stops you from using the auction house and the mailbox. Whereas everybody else playing hardcore on the official servers has access to the auction house and the mailbox. 
it's just a it's a self-imposed challenge that no one else around you is going to be doing. Hardcore was hardcore was more immersive. I felt like I when, when I was playing my hardcore characters, I cared more about them. Uh, you know, er everything felt more meaningful to a certain degree. But you know, then there's the impermanence of it. The impermanence of the fact that like eventually you're probably going to get killed. So it's a double-edged sword. What's on part, part of mind? me thinks it's, it's had its time to shine and that like everyone's kind of moved on from it. Watch your back. But yeah, I don't know. We we will find out soon if that's the case. Uh okay. So yeah, there's nothing else. There's nothing else I want to do here. I I think that we are done in the wetlands for now. And I think the next place that we're going to be questing is going to be back in Duskwood. If Sod hadn't come out, Hardcore would still thrive? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. You know, just, just like if, if official Hardcore hadn't come out, we would still be playing Hardcore on Bloodsail Buccaneers and Hydraxian Waterlords. Like, Hardcore was at its peak, and it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and then blizzard said we're gonna release official hardcore servers and then hardcore went <laughs> and everyone stopped playing on blood cell buccaneers and hydraxian waterlords right when it was like it was growing every day it was there were more and more people doing it like every time you re-rolled the starting zones were busier and busier and busier it was an amazing feeling and as soon as they announced official hardcore those servers started to die. And the same thing happened when they announced SOD. Basically, as soon as they announced SOD, the official hardcore servers went and like they died. They killed, they killed their own game, you know. When you have so many different versions of your game, you kill your own game with a version of your game. It's what I worry about with Cataclysm. It's like, I think Cataclysm is dead on arrival because people are more interested in sod and people are more interested in war within like cataclysm is right in between like classic and retail and i don't think anyone's going to be interested i think cataclysm cataclysm is dead on arrival just like i think this self found thing is it's dead on arrival it's cool for people who really want to do that but listen if you really wanted to do self found you've had the ad on this whole time people who wanted to do self found they were doing self found they were using the add on that has already existed. They didn't need it to be built into the game. They were already doing it. And so yeah, I, I think I think cell phones dead on arrival. I worry that Cataclysm is gonna be dead on arrival. And then I guess we'll have SOD and we'll have retail. And we'll have whatever other seasons of WoW come out and maybe one day we'll have Classic Plus. Who knows? I have no idea. The problem with officials that the lag lag or DC can end your run. Yeah, exactly. Whereas if, if you're playing with the add-on and some bullshit happens, you can you can just keep playing. You know what I mean? Like, if you're playing with the add-on and some really heinous shit happens, like you disconnect on a flight point, fall into the ocean and die, and it had nothing to do with you, and it was a server-side issue, y you can keep playing. You know, the character can, can resurrect and keep going. You could appeal it or whatever, or you just keep going. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's gonna be an interesting summer and an interesting autumn, and we'll see where things take us. But yeah, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right here for today. This is a great uh, a great a great stopping point. We have to get back over to Duskwood. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and blow my Hearthstone. That'll get us back to the inn. I'll soak up some rested XP for the next time we pick up this character. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today and chatting. It's been a really good time. It's been a great morning. Uh, if you enjoyed hanging out, leaving a like, making sure you're subbed to the channel, that stuff actually helps me out a lot. So I appreciate those that do. Until next time, guys, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. We'll see you back in Azeroth again very soon. Bye for now.